Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking to you <clears throat> about your perspective, your in Christ perspective. In Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, the Bible says, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. And then it goes down to verse uh, 4. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And then verse 6 it says, And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in, in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. And so there is a whole lot that's in these uh, this, these first ten verses in Ephesians chapter two, but it's just it's mind blowing. Just all the stuff that's in there. But what I'm gonna talk to you, to you about today, talk about today, is your in Christ perspective. Uh, I was one of the first major visions that I had was uh, it was about a year ago, and I was uh, getting ready, getting ready to go out, meet my parents, and go eat and stuff. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. He said, "If you change your perspective." you'll have more victory. And I was like, what are you talking about, Willis? And what are you talking about, Willis? And uh, I didn't really, I didn't grasp it. And then everything went dark. And while it was dark, I was in this big auditorium. I was in about the second row, and there was this lady on a uh, on the end of the aisle. And she was kneeled over praying. And then this guy walks down the aisle, dressed in all white. It was Jesus. And he comes and he lays his hand on her. And then after I got out of the vision uh the verse in first john four seventeen kept going through my it kept playing through my mind over and over and over and uh and that's where it says hearing his love made perfect for as he is so are we in this world and so that works together with here in ephesians 2 6 where it says and he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in christ jesus many times when we pray when we are out in our day we struggle when we're among people from the world, which is all the time, except for, you know, when you're alone with God and at church and things like that, you're, you know, you're, you feel dominated. It's like, well, you know, they're, they've got the darkness and all that. It's not that they're, like, bad people, but just that by nature, they are children of the dark. And so you're sitting there, and we all, we've always tend, tended to, for eons, to be beaten down and uh, just like we've not been the dominant source is what I'm trying to say when you go into an environment you are automatically the top dog in that environment because the Bible says in 1st John 4 4 greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so whenever you walk into somewhere you must realize what the Bible says here that God made us alive together with Christ and then he not only did that but he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus it's like whoa because that makes praying so much easier because you're no longer struggling for victory you realize that victory is already yours because Jesus has already won it he's already played the game the Bible says we are more than conquerors through him in Christ uh, because of Jesus we are more than conquerors through him who loved us <clears throat> and uh, something that you can equate that to is a professional wrestler's life or a like an MMA fighter or an athlete they go, they train, they practice, they, and then they play the game. They get beat up, whatever. They or they well, they win, but you know there's the intensity and all that. And then they get their check. And they come home and their wife's like, "Thank you," and goes out and spends it. That's what more than a conqueror is. We didn't have to fight the big fight, but we get the big reward that comes with winning the big fight. And all these other things, you know, we just stand in that place of victory where we are already victorious. We are no longer, we're not even sinners saved by grace anymore. We are saints. We don't have to wait till we die and people will vote for us to become saints. We're already saints. Once The moment you said yes to Jesus, you became a saint. You are wholly righteous before God. God chose us to be before him, with holy, without blame. That's what Ephesians 1, 4 says. Yeah, 1, 4. And because of his love. And so when you pray, whenever, realize, hey, I am seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. You are seated far above all principality, might, and dominion, and every name that is named. That's what Ephesians says. 
in uh, Ephesians 1, 21 through 23. It talks about how we are seated with him far above all these things. And so we've been set free from that. And since we are set free from that, we are victorious. People, they have the, We have too much of a victim mentality in the church. But we are victors and not victims, to quote Joel Osteen. And, uh, and so, you know, realize, walk around with the awareness that I am a champion. The Spirit of God is in me. He's on me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And then when you get in the Word, especially the epistles, they'll uh, show you what Jesus has done for you. They reveal, the Bible says that the Word of God is quick, alive, and sharper than a two-edged sword. And it's able to divide between soul and spirit. It's like, well, what's that mean? Because you're made up of three por three parts, your spirit, your soul, and your body. And your spirit, man, is the part of you that's most like God. That's the part of you that was born again uh, when you said yes to Jesus. That was the part of you that was completely changed, that became the new creature. And the rest of it comes as we get in the Word. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. You know, we have, Like I said, we have a spirit, we have a, a soul, and we live in a body. We are a spirit. That's us. But we let that part get hidden and beat up and dominated by our flesh and our mind so much. And uh, But that's a whole different message. But what I'm talking to you right now is that we are seated with him in the heavenly places. And the word shows us the things we have because we are victors. With the fact that we are healed. That we have the joy of the Lord. That we can rejoice anytime there is a pool of joy or a river of joy that's always constantly flowing in us. And all we have to do is jump in and be like, you know, I'm going to rejoice. The, David even did this. He said, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You can make up your mind right now that I'm going to be joyful, never going to be sick again, and just keep going on and on and on. That's how much is in the Word, especially in the New Testament. He shows you His goodness, it, and it, it starts to explain and elaborate how He wants to prove His love for us. But this is just a start, and I'm really glad to be back to our kingdom after being gone for a week. And uh, it's I'm really excited for what God's going to do in your life and through our kingdom. I'm believing that as people watch these, they are being transformed, set free, delivered, whatever. Because you know God's just a good God. Uh, you know I thank you guys, and I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow.